Good morning, folks. We've got fantastic stories here on a Sunday morning. Your eyes meet a combined 304 angstrom view of helium in red with a faint pink atmosphere signature of ionized iron in 211 angstroms. Before we dig deeper, this is also a good opportunity to see how much more of that coronal atmosphere is present near the filaments than at the polar region with the coronal hole. It's a great visualization of how the coronal holes blast out those particles as solar wind rather than keep them in the corona. Let's come to spaceweathernews.com. Let's find the last day on our star with coronal holes patchy and disjointed on the south. Since we still have no sunspots and therefore no solar flaring, let's go to the solar wind. Telemetry dropping out right side, which does allow the cosmic rays easier access to create those error spikes. Indeed, with the solar wind dropping, geomagnetic system is quiet on every meter in existence this morning. Looking ahead to the coronal holes that are coming this week, this is Stereo A. It's positioned a few months behind Earth in orbit so it can see what's turning towards us on the Sun. I would expect seismicity to rebound, finally ramp back up with the arrival of their magnetism. Let's go out to the weather. Two notes. This is a tornado that dropped out of the typhoon in Japan. Many, many people missing and reports vary around 10 confirmed dead so far. We showed the system en route to New Zealand. A couple hours before tomorrow's show, this one will have just arrived and began the flash flood risk on the North Island. Eyes open there. We've got solar storm news up next. In a detailed look back at combined data sources during the 1989 Quebec blackout, which occurred during a tremendous geomagnetic storm, they have determined it was the second impact that triggered the system failures rather than the peak of the geomagnetic storm even though that peak did extend the troubles to the U.S., Sweden, and the U.K. But alas, a reminder for channel veterans and a key point for new viewers. The multiple impact scenario is the scariest, with the impacts themselves driving major inductions, often triggering system failures, even before the visible aurora and global magnetic disruptions begin to have their peak. Up next, a quick little note. We actually saw the preprint of this on Archive a few weeks ago, but now it's in the Solar Physics Journal. We learn that the Northern Hemisphere has reversed first the last four times, and that the data suggests to this researcher that a similar solar cycle 25 will follow this 24th. We do happen to agree. In a terrific paper detailing the geomagnetic effects of CMEs versus coronal holes in sector boundary crossings, it turns out that a key difference is in the intensified solar wind oxygen ion pressure, which is greater for the CMEs and peaks at lower latitude L-shell magnetic fields. Let's get a great confirmation of cosmic rays connection to clouds and climate, and also a rationale for some of the confusion the last few years. They say the signature is greater in the north, which makes sense because landmass changes surface temp much more than the oceans do, and so with greater landmass in the north, cosmic rays should have more of an effect. Always a solid space weather climate forcing topic. Before going further, let's take a little breather and let our eyes take in this beautiful, almost edge-on galaxy called NGC 3713. Hubble's latest here shows that it's not quite sideways from our view, allowing for an interesting depth comparison looking back across the disk. While dust hangs in the atmosphere here on Earth for days to years based on wind and buoyancy, on the moon the levitation is done electrically. FYI, there was a recent paper that suggests Earth's was electrodynamic as well, but follow-up confirmations are pending. Not needed on the moon, though. There's no other way to float those micron particles except electromagnetism. Many of you remember the Monocerotus Nova spotted in 2002. Since then, has utterly transformed itself. For those seeking to extra geek out on cosmic structure, a two-paper release detailing their examination of filamentary structures within it will titillate both the eyes and the mind. Then again, so will this. They say the last true slow polar wander was in the Jurassic era. Now while that is a fun topic, the more frequent magnetic cron reversals and even more frequent excursion events are of greater importance practically. So folks, for those who don't know, this is pretty much mainstream. We have these extinction level event magnetic changes revealed every 12,000 years or so. And with that timeline, with Earth's magnetic field undergoing the starting phase of the next shift over the last two centuries, and with us approaching the tipping point as the changes are not only significant here on Earth but speeding up, well, if you just managed to find your way here the last few weeks and haven't seen Cosmic Disaster, it is linked in the box below the video, it is one of our feature films from this year, and it covers not only the past, 
but what's about to happen again. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.